Okay? So that's the two-way toss. Here's a wonderful application for it. Have an extra quarter in your hand, palmed. Borrow a quarter, borrow a bill. You borrow both objects, okay? You say, I'm going to make a paper prism. I'm going to take the bill and ball it up to a tight, airtight little ball. And of course, I've just loaded the quarter inside the bill. I say, watch. Do not take your eyes off your quarter. One, two, three. They can now open up the bill and they find inside the quarter. Now, you could do this with a marked bill, uh, with a, sorry, a marked coin. I strongly advise you not to. The old cliche, don't run when you're not being chased. There's no heat on this. That you borrow both objects, the bill and the quarter, you show both sides, you've got the quarter beneath here, you ball it up tightly, and in full view of them, they see you apparently toss the bill at the quarter, the quarter melts right inside. They, you, I back away. I, I'll even put my hands in my pockets. Ba I back away. I say, go ahead. They open up. When they find the quarter inside, it's just, and again, and they get to keep all the props. You borrowed and finished with everything in their hands. Um, get the two-way toss down. Try this once or twice. Uh, it'll be well worth the practice. I've spent uh, well over 20 years trying to develop the, um, the strongest coins across trick I could come up with. I want something that's good on angles, something that's commercial, something that I can do anytime, anywhere, and most of all, something that looks like real magic. The key to real magic, simplicity. It's got to look simple and it's got to look convincing. So several years ago, it's got to be three years ago now, maybe four years ago, in my videotape, um, Short and Sweet, um, I came up with a trick called Mr. Clean Coins Across. And um, it turned out to be that trick. The coin trick was the strongest, most popular trick on that tape. A lot of magicians, particularly professionals, contacted me and said they thought it was a really clean coins across. Um, uh, just, you know, just a lot of great people uh, from the West Coast and East Coast. It was a, sort of made the circles. Um, and I'm going to show it to you now. Uh, I've refined a little bit more. There are one or two other tricks that have come out since after my videotape, after, this is one of the frustrating things about creating, after I put out my version uh, six months, a year, two years later, there have been a couple other coins across that are extremely similar. Uh, but I think if you go back and look at this original version, um, I think you'll see that a lot, of the, you know, a lot of the strong elements were there from the beginning. So, and again, revolutionary, it's not a revolutionary handling, but it's a really clean handling. So here it is, Mr. Clean, Coins Across. Something with three coins. I'm going to make all three coins jump from my left hand to my right. Watch the first one. Just like that. This one's going to go from there and join that one there. Watch the second one. Finally, the last one is going to go from my left hand to join these two coins here. Don't take your eyes off it. Three, two, one. That's one, two, three coins which I think you'll agree is about as clean as coins across. There's no back and forth action. There's no shells. There's no you're one behind or one. It's just boom, boom. This trick, when I do it for people, I do very little patter with it. I do it right in front of them. And I gotta say, it's the kind of trick that literally pisses people off. The first coin, they get frustrated. The second coin, they get angry. The third coin, they're livid. It's just so direct. There's no place for them to go magically. I do this everywhere, all right? Now, We've already learned about the Goshman pinch, which we're using, and we've already learned about the pointing transfer, which we're using. Um, and we've already learned about the tap, the Richard Sanders idea of dropping coin off as you tap. So we just put it all together, and here's what we have. Three coins are apparently tossed from the right hand into the left. What I actually do is hold one back using, again, the Benzeus click pass or the Marlowe friction. Okay. And I go, this is a po classic palm. As I say, this coin's going to go from here. One coin's going to go from here to here. Show this hand empty. Okay, but it's actually gone to Goshman. I give a squeeze, show the first one. So that's number one. And what I'm doing to get it in is I actually, this is a good point, is I actually, I don't pull it in with my thumb. I give it a shake. I shake upwards, and because of the momentum of the fist, the coin pops into the hand, all right? So that's the first one. Now I do the pointing transfer. And as I do it, I put this one beneath the, hand, the Goshman pinch, so it looks like this one's going to go from here and join that one there. But what I'm doing is putting one beneath the pinch, Pointing transfer, dropping that one off. But you put it all together, and it looks copacetic. It looks like you're saying, this one's going to go from here and join that one there. Second one, same thing. Very frustrating for a layperson. Last one, I put this into Goshman pinch in the right hand. As I tap, drop the one coin, I hold this coin right in front of a spectator's face. I hold it right in front of their face. I make a fist. I then give a shake, 
they find all three coins in the left hand. When I do this for people, they often hold their gaze on this fist even after I drop the three. They're convinced the last one's in here. When I open my hand, a single bloody tear trickles down the side of their face every single time. Real simple, real organic, handful of change, baggy, very simple. I'm certainly not the first person to play with baggy uh, ideas with Ziploc baggies. A couple people have. Um, the idea is the simplicity itself. You've got an extra dime, which you palm, a dupe. You've got a dupe dime, which you palm. Um, and you ask someone, do they have a dime? And they ask them to put their initial on the dime. They do. So they end up putting their a big initial written on the dime. Now, all I'm going to do is take the dime. Um, sorry, it, your, your palmed coin starts in the left hand. Is take their dime and false transfer it from the right hand to the left hand. Pick it up with my fingers, hold open the bag of change with nickels and dimes and quarters in it, drop apparently their marked coin directly into the bag, give it a shake and seal it up right in front of them, okay? You wanna get, you wanna get a sense of, you wanna do this with a sense that you're just beginning the trick. They mark a coin, you drop it in the bag, you shake it up, very fair. Now, the key to this for the actual technique is while you're shaking the bag, you come over and you hold the bag and what you're actually doing is the coin is in finger palm or fingertip rest and your thumb props up the front edge because the grip you want is that grip. That's the grip you want. You want to make sure that when you come over from so that you can load the dime behind the bag beneath your thumb. That's the position you want. From the front, it looks like I'm shaking the bag and then I come over with my right fingers and simply take the bag and I've loaded the coin behind it. And I ask someone to hold their hand, and I say, watch this. You won't believe this. We've ziplocked the bag. This is a freezer bag. There's no way for moisture or anything to get in and out. I go, watch. You're going to find your on three shakes. One, two, three. They see a coin fall neatly out, and it is their marked dime. So it's a real simple piece of magic. And all I'm doing is, of course, covering the trajectory or the fall of the dime. You want to make sure your grip on the dime is as tenuous as possible, a real light grip on the dime, so that you go one, and the, by going down with the bag, the coins come up, and there's this, it covers the trajectory of the dime when you let it drop on three. One, two, the coins come up, you let the dime drop, three, it falls neatly into your hand, you end clean, handing them the marked dime, you can hand this out, and people invariably want to examine the surface and take a good look at the bag. It's just a real visual, simple penetration. David Roth's move, pop-outs, inspired me to work on other kinds of moves like that. And I came up with a move called a dropout. And a dropout is a really cool move, well worth the practice. You can come up with uh, just devastating kinds of penetrations and uh, up through things and all this and down through things, all this. Let me show you the dropout. You have the coin in classic palm. And you're going to let the coin fall from classic palm. In this case, I'm using large silver dollars. Um, because this is the routine I typically do it with, but you let the coin fall, it lands on the table on its edge, and you immediately pluck it between the middle finger and thumb. So it looks like the coin literally appears out of nowhere, right at your tips. That's what a dropout is. Now this is a perfect move, for, of course, for what? Coins to the table, right? So here's what I do. Let me show you the performance speed. Say something with a coin. Actually, it's a large American silver dollar. Look, I can take the coin, and I can actually put it down through the table. Um, actually, let me open up this even easier. Let me open up this other flange. Here we go. OK. So I say, watch. I take the coin, and I'm going to put it right down through the table. Listen. Just like that, it goes down to the table. I say, look, we'll do it again. I'll take the coin. Listen carefully goes down to the table. If I want, I can even make it go up through the table. So this always gets a guess. It's very strong magic. And of course, what I'm doing is I have two of them, OK? And I do a flying shuttle, flying shuttle to show my hands empty. I only do this for performance here on the video so you can see it. I do it a few times. In real performance, I wouldn't do it more than twice while talking to people, OK? I take the coin and do a false transfer into the left hand come over and do the old tapping and at the same time as I tap on the underside of the table I'm hitting this coin underneath the table so of course you get this now you move it around 
while making a circular gesture with the other coin beneath. And then snap the coin up against the underside of the table like this. You snap it, so you end up with this. Like that, boom. That itself is a really good trick. I then do a false train, I then do a shuttle pass here, show the coin, and now I'm gonna really move forward with the solid coin. But I go from here to classic palm. So I move forward with just the fingers. So they see this gesture, classic palm, come over, and again underneath the table, I'm gonna go circular and snap. I'm now in a perfect position for drop out, which is where I take the coin back under, I go one, two, and on three, do a drop out. Come forward with the hold the coin still, but I immediately do a flying shuttle to clean it up. So performance speed looks like this. This is a solid object. And the table is a solid object. But still, I'm gonna try something kind of odd. Watch. Just just like that, it goes to the table. I say, look, we'll do it again. I did it once, I'm gonna try it again. Watch carefully. I'm gonna take the coin down through the table. What's really weird is watch me take it one up through the table, a solid object, through a solid object. Well, there you have it, uh, my little uh, video on the coin magic. Uh, I think you find many of the moves you've never seen before. I hope you practice lots and have a good time. I appreciate your interest in me and my strange magic. Uh, as I go through my life and try all, I don't know, all the different drugs this world has to offer, I appreciate you supporting my creativity. The thing about it is, when I speak sometimes, I have no ending to my sentences, but in the end, it's always pure, unadulterated magic of the soul. <laughs> That's a cut.